Okay, two points I want to hit on. Yes, the title, but also the longevity effect discussed by Dr. Rhonda Patrick when discussing a study looking at the omega-3 index, which is a blood marker of the amount of omega-3 fat that is integrated into your cells. So as more omega-3 fats are built into the membrane of your cells, in this case, red blood cells, the higher your omega-3 index, which is measured as a percentage. So Dr. Patrick had several interesting things to say on the topic, but she gets one critical piece of information incorrect that I'd like to con contextualize as well. Let's listen in first. <laughs> But anyways, the, the thing that's amazing with the omega-3 index is that people that have the 8% mm -hmm. omega-3 index are have a five-year increased life expectancy compared to people that have wow. 4%. Five, five years. Five year. Think about five years of being around your loved ones, doing amazing things, enjoying life. Five years? Five years. And there's studies showing that they're like, you're much less, less likely to get... Alzheimer's disease if you have a high omega-3 index. So the quality of life is better as well. Yeah, no doubt that's an impressive statistic. That means that if you have a high omega-3 index defined as 8% or greater, you have a greater chance of living five years longer than someone with a low omega-3 index, which is defined as 4% or lower. That was mentioned in this study. I know that because Dr. Patrick kindly provided references, honestly something that I think that all science-based community communicators should be doing. In that study, researchers do mention a 4.74 years added at the high omega-3 index, but they're in lies a problem that we'll get into in just a minute. Let's continue on for the time being. Um, mm. And I was telling you this yesterday and I like talking <laughs> about it because it blows my mind every time. Yeah. The smoke, so they, they took this cohort of people and they were smokers in there. Mm. There were smokers and there's non-smokers. And, um, and they looked at their omega-3 index and they found that the smokers that had a high omega-3 index of 8%, so these are smokers that are like, I need the fish oil, I gotta do, I'm smoking. You yeah. know. These, <laughs> they had the same life expectancy as the non-smokers with the low omega-3 index. That is insane. <laughs> you could be somebody who's running every day but not getting enough fish oil, and then somebody who's you know smoking a pack of Marlboros and taking fish oil, and you're gonna live the same amount, roughly? This is the point related to smoking. Hopefully I'm not too out of line when I say that we can, I think, all agree that smoking is not a positive for our health. Dr. Gundry has entered the chat. Let me know if you understood that reference. In fact, smoking is one of the most detrimental things that we can do to our body. So it's pretty wild to hear that a person can consume enough omega-3s, but smokes might be in a same ballpark as someone who doesn't. So you and me probably, but may have a low omega-3 index. However, if we lean on the same study and we look at the data, we see that might be the case. On the horizontal axis, we have the age of the participants and on the vertical, we have the survival over time. So the higher the lines are, the better. I'll highlight the two groups of interest, the low omega-3 but non-smoking and the high omega-3 and smoking here. See how the lines overlap? That means that Dr. Patrick is spot on. They're similar in survival. Of course, being low in your omega-3 index and smoking is the worst of all. However, this is where a big piece of context isn't being mentioned and isn't mentioned later on. Initially, I heard these claims and I was really impressed. So I popped open the study that we've been going over and I was disappointed because while it seems that the study is indicating that is true, the data for the 4.74 years, call five years of added life is based on an estimate, meaning these are theoretical, not based directly from compared data. The researchers even say that these are theoretical. That doesn't mean that they pulled it out of thin air. There's still data behind it, but they are extending the data out over time, predicting what might happen based on a predictive model, as opposed to showing the data that did show it directly. This is a big deal because it doesn't guarantee these results are going to end up being true when the data is completely collected. The takeaway here is that we can't make any definitive claims that a low omega-3 status is actually going to lead to five fewer years of life, even if it does seem to track with being equivalent to smoking, which is a pretty punchy line in its own right. So then, do we go to the other extreme that omega-3 is not beneficial then? No. 
We have evidence that omega-3s are still beneficial in reducing mortality risk. Beyond that, larger analyses also confirm that to be true. Still, all of these analyses still suffer from methodological limitations that the authors acknowledge. For example, they fail to adjust or control for nutrition. And it's even been brought up that omega-3 could simply be a marker of generally healthier lifestyle, like eating habits, than the actual causative factor for reducing mortality risk. And that's true if we base things only on these analyses. But as we've covered many direct studies on omega-3s on physionic, I'm still quite confident that is not the case. My stance remains that omega-3s have direct causative positive health effects. I think the uncertainty is more so based on these studies, the conclusion that we know how many more years of life omega-3s will provide. We have estimates, but we need better data. I'm gonna be going into much more depth in my full analysis, going over different types of omega-3s and different mortality risks. If you're interested, you can find the full video along with the article to go along with it as a member of the Physionic Insiders. It's linked in the description. Not to even mention all this other stuff that you get as a member too. That all said, that leaves us with a few take home points. One, Dr. Patrick brings up a great point that it does seem that having a low omega-3 index is associated with mortality risks similar to smoking, except how much smoking isn't exactly clear, unfortunately. Two, I think it's a bit overzealous to say that there's a five-year life extension since uh, the estimate of life extension is just that, an estimate. We need to have actual better data for that. Although there's no denying that there are many studies that indicate health benefits of omega-3s. And three, none of this should dissuade someone from measuring their omega-3 index and aiming to maintain it around 8%, if not a bit higher, i.e. out of deficiency. You can achieve that through algae oil, krill oil, fish oil, or just straight up eating seafoods like fatty fish a few times per week. But like I said, there are many studies that show direct evidence of omega-3s improving things like our cardiovascular health. And one that I've covered before is something that I've never seen anyone else mention before. I go into it right here. I'll see you over there.